Good evening and welcome to evening prayer. My name is Sylvia Moore. I am a parishioner at St. Mark's in Irving, Texas, and I'll be guiding us through the readings this evening. Our first step is to look up the, the um, readings, and we're going to find those on page 957 of the Book of Common Prayer. In the, the week of, uh, fifth week of Lent, and this evening's reading will come from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. And our reading from the Psalter this evening will be Psalm 41 through 43. Evening prayer begins on page 115 with the opening verse. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. On page 116, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Um, amen. On page 118, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our reading from the Psalter begins on page 641 with Psalm 41. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in, time, in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their, in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All their enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He has taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, from age to age. Amen. Amen. Chapter 42. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I, drink, when I think on these things, how I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance 
and my God. My soul is heavy within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the peak of Mizar, from among the heights of Hermon. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to the God of my strength, why have you forgotten me? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? While my bones are being broken, my enemies mock me to my face. All day long they mock me and say to me, where now is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him who is the help of my countenance and my God. Psalm 43. Give judgment for me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. Deliver me from the deceitful and the wicked, for you are the God of my strength. Why have you put me from you? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling, that I may go to the altar of God, to the God of my joy and gladness, and on the harp I will give thanks to you, O God, my God. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now I will read from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, from chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. Therefore, since we have this ministry, because we were shown mercy, we do not give up. Instead, we have renounced shameful secret things, not walking in deceit or distorting God's message, but commending ourselves to every person's conscience in God's sight by an open display of the truth. But if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we are not proclaiming ourselves, ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves because of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Now we have this treasure in clay jars, so that this is extraordinary power may be from God and not from us. We are pressured in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry the death of Jesus in our body so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who live are always given over to death because of Jesus, so that Jesus' life may also be revealed in our mortal, in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle response is the Song of Mary, found on page 119. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. 
He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up good, the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Now we are going to have a reading uh, about the life of William Augustus Muhlenberg. William Augustus Muhlenberg was born in Philadelphia in 1796 into a prominent German Lutheran family and was drawn to the Episcopal Church by its use of English. He deliberately chose to remain unmarried to free himself for a variety of ministries. As a young clergyman, he was deeply involved in the Sunday School movement and was concerned that the church should minister to all social groups. Aware of the limitations of hymnody of his time, he wrote hymns and compiled hymnals, thus widening the range of music in Episcopal churches. For 20 years, he was head of a boys' school in Flushing, New York, where many influential churchmen were educated. The use of music, flowers, and color and the emphasis on the church year in the worship there became a potent influence. In 1846, he founded the Church of the Holy Communion in New York City. Again, he was bold and innovative. Free pews for everyone, a parish school, a parish unemployment fund, and trips to the country for poor city children. His conception of beauty in worship vivid and symbol symbolic, had at its heart the Holy Communion itself, celebrated every Sunday. It was there that Anne Ayers founded the Sisterhood of the Holy Communion. In 1857, the two of them founded St. Luke's Hospital, where Muhlenberg was the pastor superintendent and she the matron. Muhlenberg's concern for sacramental worship and evangelism led him and several associates to memorialize the General Convention of 1853, calling for flexibility in worship and polity to enable the church better to fulfill its mission. The insistence of the memorial on traditional Catholic elements, the creeds, the Eucharist, and the Episcopal ordination, together with the Reformation doctrine of grace, appealed to people of varying views. Although the church was not ready to adopt the specific suggestions of the memorial, its influence was great, notably in preparing the ground for liturgical reform and ecumenical ac action. Muhlenberg's last great project was an experiment in Christian so social living, St. Johnland on Long Island. Although this dream of a Christian city was not realized, several of its philanthropic institutions survive. Here ends the reading. On page 120, let us affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our first collect is for William Augustus Muhlenberg. Do not let your church close its eye, eyes, O Lord, to the plight of the poor and neglected, the homeless and destitute, the old and the sick, the lonely and those who have none to care for them. Give us the vision and compassion with which you so richly endowed your servant, William Augustus Muhlenberg, that we may labor tireless, tirelessly to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our next collect is found on page 123, a collect for Fridays. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servant, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. And on page 124, a collect for mission. Keep watch, dear, Lo dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the, the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. I invite your prayers at this time. We continue to lift up prayers for those on our parish intercession list. This evening we seek comfort for the Brysons, the Carmichael family, Susan H. and Whitney, favor for the Mason family, grace for Andrew and Yoon, guidance for Casey and Patrick, peace for Elizabeth and Pat, physical healing for Ben, Brad, Candy, Carla, Christine, Father Damien, David, Deanna, Didi, Drew, George, Hun, Jimmy, John M, John S, Catherine, Kathleen, Lisa, Mary, Melinda, Red, Rex, Sandy, Sherilyn, Susan, Terry, and Wes. Protection for Annalise, Billy, Louis, Michael, and the people of Ukraine. Strength for April, Blewett, John, Kelly, Amanda, and Darby, Megan, Stan, and Teresa, Steffi, and Amanda, and the Thomas family. The general thanksgiving is found on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to him with you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. 
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me for evening prayer. Thank you for making comments on Facebook. Marjorie and Father Bob and Jerry and Mike, I hope you are going to have a wonderful evening. I, and I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow morning for uh, morning prayer at 9 o'clock. God bless y'all.